All right, well, good morning, everyone. I'm just gonna give it a couple more moments as people join us from the waiting room. I know um, we're coming off of a holiday weekend, so we're just gonna give it a couple more moments for people to collect, and then we'll get started. So thanks for, for joining us on this uh, Tuesday for our February uh, data working group. All right, well, we'll just go ahead and dive in because I know we've got a lot of content to cover for today and we know people will join us as we go. I do want to welcome everyone back uh, to our February uh, data working group. Uh, we are really thrilled to see uh, this group of people back together again after our last session back in January, which is all about smooth information management systems. Um, as we move into February, we are starting on a new topic. We're going to begin a conversation uh, today on establishing database cycles of improvement. Um, as we know for many schools, February is really the start of your strategic planning processes. Uh, this can relate to your goal setting or your budgeting processes as well. And so because this is such an important time where you're looking at your data, you're collecting this information and trying to set goals uh, for, the, for the next school year, we wanted to begin that conversation by bringing in some experts who can help talk to how your school can use those data to set goals. So we're excited to host the session to assist schools uh, with our partners at Innovare. Uh, I'm happy to welcome today two presenters from Innovare who are going to lead us in this conversation, which is actually a two-part conversation. We'll begin it this month, and then we will continue this conversation at our March meeting at sort of another level of, of talking about this sort of cycles of improvement. Both sessions are, you know, they're, they're both accessible, uh, so we're happy that you're here for our first one, um, and it will continue in the next one, but by no means uh, attendance today means that you have to attend next month, and for the people who attend next month, they'll be able to jump in as well. We do want to just uh, turn over uh, uh, the floor to our, to our partners. So I'll begin uh, turning it over to Arya Monkri, who is a customer success manager, and Adam Schaefer, who is an account strategist with Innovare. Both of these individuals have extensive experience leading professional development and consultation with schools to refine their data collection processes. Arya is a former teacher and data strategist with the New York City DOE for several years, and is also a certified principal in New York and Washington, D.C. She's worked closely with many charter schools to implement Innovare uh, through, her, through her role there. And so without further ado, let me introduce Aria and Adam. Great, thank you, Michael. Really appreciate the introduction and the opportunity today. <clears throat> uh, as Michael alluded to, our presentation today will be all about goal cycles uh, and data-driven goal cycles. So the focus is empowering your school leadership team with achievable goal cycles. And again, really appreciate all of you attending today. I know. A lot of you are on winter break, uh, so it means an extra lot uh, to uh, see you all today. Uh, again, thank you for Anna Hall, Michael, uh, and the, the whole team at NYCSA for including us in this data working group presentation. We really appreciate the, the opportunity to, to share our uh, knowledge and our expertise. Uh, real quick recap. Uh, so myself, Adam Schaefer, I am a former high school music teacher, uh, turned nonprofit fundraiser, turned MBA, uh, focusing on social impact. So I, the work I do here at Innovare, I work in partnerships and growth. Uh, so I work in uh, really building the relationships with organizations like NYCSA to help charter schools in the end to, to uh, have webinars like this, to uh, to get connected with customer success managers like Aria. So I'll pass it off to Aria for a quick introduction and we'll get going. Hi, good morning. Happy winter break. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, as was introduced, I am a uh, former data specialist and social studies teacher. I taught at Bronxdale High School in the Bronx, a public school up there uh, for eight years. And for six of those eight years, I was their data specialist. So I like to say that everything that involved the spreadsheet was my job. So I have engaged with everything from attendance data to uh, periodic assessment data, coming up with ways in which we can do uh, graduation progress tracking, region scores, uh, you name it, it's, it's come across my desk. And I'm really excited now to take that knowledge uh, and really turn it around and help coach leaders and, uh, and, and data specialists themselves to really help uh, school leadership to not just look at data, but take that data and actually turn it into a concrete strategy and a concrete plan. So I'm really excited to be here with you all. Great, thanks, Arya. So real quick overview of the agenda today. I'm not gonna read through this, but I do wanna emphasize that there are three activities throughout. Uh, so I, I do ask that you, you stay involved, get active. Um, we will we'll present a lot of content, uh, but we do wanna emphasize the interactivity of this workshop. Uh, do utilize that chat function as well. <clears throat> Ari and I will kind of tag team this presentation 
Uh, so while one person is not presenting, they'll be able to engage in that chat if you have questions. Uh, and by all means, uh, interrupt and ask us questions along the way too, because we want this to be as informational and supportive as you need it to be. So real quick, since we are uh, all uh, former teachers here, we did wanna start with learning objectives. <clears throat> Excuse me. So attendees will uh, gain insight into improvement science uh, and various methodologies usable in your classrooms and schools. Uh, attendees will leave with multiple frameworks for goal setting. Uh, that's the main point of today. And then attendees will learn practical use cases for goal setting. Uh, so let's dive right in. So the first part is uh, up to you. So uh, the goal for improvement. We're going to quickly already uh, dive into the, the interactive part uh, today. So what we're going to do is share one goal that you have. So I'm going to stop presenting and I'm going to, let's see if I can, where's my chat? Drop all of these links in here. So we're going to go into Jamboard. Hopefully you all have experienced Jamboard uh, once or twice. It's really uh, quite easy to use. Um, sorry for the pause here. So <clears throat> I wasn't sure how many we would actually have. Uh, Jamboard limits you to 20 boards per um, per uh, file. So I've created a few extra. So it looks like we may may just need a couple, but by all means, click in there, use the, the link uh, with your birth month. And what we're gonna do is just jump in there, <clears throat> excuse me, find, uh, find an empty board, put your name and email in there, and then what I want you to do is just complete that first part. And I'm gonna uh, share my screen again so you can see kind of what I'm talking about. So here we are in, uh, in the Jamboard. Uh, at the top, uh, you'll see the ability to uh, slide across the screen. So go to one that is not used and go ahead and claim it for yourself. Put your name, email there. And then the first thing we're gonna do is write one goal you currently have. This can be professional or personal. Uh, it doesn't matter, uh, and uh, I'm not going to give you any more context than that. I'll give you about two minutes to complete this. And Ari and I will just be jumping back and forth between all the, the various jam boards. And if you are having problems at all, just come off mute or private message uh, us and we can get something figured out. Yeah, where do I look for Jamboard? Yeah, if you go in the, the uh, Zoom chat, I put in four links. Just click on that first link that's in the chat. All right. And then once you're in there, you're going to look towards the top and you've got a whole bunch of boards here. It looks like Ellen is already at it. Way to go, Ellen. Looks like we have Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. So just zoom right through there and find an empty board. Way to go, Dylan. And I always enjoy the, the little strange icons that Google puts in these. The anonymous llama is in here. Great, so just take maybe one more minute again. Uh, we're doing something very straightforward, very basic. You're just gonna write one goal you currently have. This can be professional or personal. All right, let's go ahead and wrap that up. Again, we don't need it to be too exhaustive extensive. Uh, we just want a general goal to, to begin with. So uh, if you're not finished, uh, with with that yet, by, by all means, go ahead. We are going to continue on in the, the presentation now. Uh, so we do respect everyone's time here. And again, ask questions in the chat. Aria will answer those for the next few slides. Uh, and if you need some clarification on anything, we can take care of that. So the first thing we're going to focus on is, is generally the, the science of improvement, because we want to start, start with the foundation for this conversation. So the model for improvement includes three, three aspects, uh, innovation, rapid cycles, and variation. Uh, as charter school um, uh, staff, as charter school board members, as teachers, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a very innovative space. That's kind of the, one of the main ethos of the charter space. So we have to innovate, we have to change, we have to improve 
Uh, and then the other part is rapid cycles and then variation. It's very important to focus on that variation because that's the, the improvement part. Uh, whether it's good or bad, doesn't matter. It's the matter that we focus on and learn from that variation. A few key questions uh, in improvement science or the model for improvement to just get your brain to start thinking through this of why we're doing this goal setting. Uh, so what are, the, what are we trying to accomplish? What changes might we introduce and why? How will we know that a change is an improvement, which is a really great question. And then the last one, is, and always ask yourself at the end of any goal cycle is, did we do what we said we were going to do? And if not, what, what happened? So again, this is just a very basic uh, understanding of the model of improvement or improvement science. We're gonna dive now into a continuous improvement, which is a concept that I know a lot of you are working on or understand in the charter space, uh, especially as we, um, uh, as we see it more uh, prevalent in, in charter spaces as, as well as public spaces. So there are six core principles that we, we utilize in continu continuous improvement, uh, and we credit the, the Carnegie Foundation for this work. So those six core principles, and if you were with us in that last uh, presentation webinar we did back in October, Nick, our, one of our founders of Innovare, and I presented on core conditions of continuous improvement. So we're going to skim through this really quickly. Uh, today's not all about uh, all six of them. We really want to only focus on the fifth one. So just a reminder. So the first uh, pillar is be user-centered and problem-specific. The second one is you want to study that variation. So what changed in the process, in that whole cycle? The third one is be a system thinker. So understand the system that you're working in uh, so you can then change it or improve it. Fourth one is, and uh, we have so many uh, data professionals, data staff on the, the webinar today. So this one is really key to you all. Uh, measure what you manage and rely on that power of data. Uh, rely on the truth of data uh, to help, uh, help build your improvement style and your goal cycles. The fifth one, like I said, we're gonna focus a lot on today. Uh, so I'll uh, skim over this real quick. Discipline your improvement inquiry through rapid learning cycles. Again rapid learning cycles, quick uh, in inquisition, basically. And that sixth one is create collective impact to build sustainable improvement. Um, so someone, something similar we're doing here today, we're all coming together uh, to learn, to share ideas, to share goals. That is that collective impact. So uh, build efficiencies in your improvement through connecting with uh, similar people in similar roles across your state in New York, across the country. Um, and that's kind of what we're here for as well. So we, we embody continuous improvement in what we are at Innovare, uh, and uh, we call our application the con and continuous improvement platform. So if you look at all six of those pillars, uh, we, we cover all six of those. We kind of bring to life what those pillars are. So the first one is we take the human-centered design and how we work with our school partners. Second one is we, we build out uh, strategy within, within our application so you can then study that variation. The third one is we, we integrate and we triangulate data so you can then bring together systems so you can think innovatively, so you can think differently that you, than you couldn't before. Fourth one is we bring to, excuse me, we bring to life disparate systems again. Uh, so then you can improve, then you can drive improvement uh, in your schools. Fifth one is we, we have an app that um, you can build out those rapid learning cycles, which we'll focus on today. And then that sixth one is we have what's called the universe where we bring together uh, people from all across the, the country working on similar goals, working on some similar challenges uh, where we want to share in that genius. All right, so focusing on the goal setting, and again, uh, ask questions, come off mute, or put your questions in the chat along the way. So goal setting. So today is the first of a two-part series, which Michael mentioned. Uh, so this month and next month, we're going to focus on that fifth pillar. So again, uh, the fifth pillar is discipline your improvement inquiry through rapid learning cycles. So we want to learn quickly. We want to do this quickly so then we can improve uh, even quicker. So rapid learning cycle is a high velocity innovation. It's not about changing or it's not about creating a two to three year plan that you're going to incrementally change. It's about creating a cycle that's very quick, usually a matter of weeks, maybe a matter of uh, about quarter or semester, uh, but nothing like a three year or five year strategic plan. These rapid learning cycles are really designed to be fast so you can learn fast, as they say, learn fast, fail fast, but hopefully you learn fast, succeed fast, and then replicate that model. 
Uh, another key of this is learn by doing. So you wanna focus on what you're learning, not necessarily what you're doing, uh, because the whole concept of this is to learn um, and replicate. One of the frameworks that you all are probably very familiar with, uh, this is a pretty standard goal framework across the board, uh, whatever industry you may be in, but I wanted to include it as one of the frameworks that we talk about today um, because we've added a couple of uh, letters towards the end of it. So we refer to this as a SMARTY goal. Uh, we're not the only ones to, to do this, but we do think it's important. So <clears throat> SMART goals, we are all familiar with. So what I want you to do as I read through this, think back to that goal that you put on the Jamboard. Don't necessarily go back to the Jamboard, but just think through it. What did you put in there? Uh, so may, was your goal specific or was it overly broad? Did you remember to include something about measurement because you need to measure what you manage? Or you, yeah. Third one is you wanna create an attainable goal. Incremental, incrementalism is good. It actually is uh, the way you uh, improve sustainably. Next one is the goal should be relevant to the stakeholder group. So whomever that stakeholder group is, make sure it's relevant. Uh, and that's part of that understanding the system, understanding the community. Next one is design a goal that is time-based. Again, you don't wanna create an open-ended goal. Um, if I wanna say, I wanna um, become healthier, um, and that's it. Does that mean I want to become healthier by the time I'm 90? Or does it uh, mean I want to be healthier in the next two weeks? I don't know. So be specific about that time-based measurement. And then those last two are really important. Uh, as we, as we uh, build more uh, inclusion, as we build more equity, equity across all of our systems as a, as a society, this is a really good way to ensure that we're doing that through goal setting. So that next one is ensure that your goal is inclusive of all stakeholders. And then lastly, design the actions and the goal that provide equitable impact. So take a moment to pause to think about the intended impact. Is it having any negative uh, unintended impact? So to think through that equitable uh, frame. And again, ask questions along the way if you have any questions or if you uh, would like to add to any of this. Uh, and then, okay, so let's go into the rapid learning cycle. Again, uh, we're gonna focus a lot on the PDSA cycle in uh, Marge's webinar we're only going to focus on the first part today. So we're only gonna focus on the plan uh, because you, before you actually start doing things, you have to plan. So in that plan phase, you're going to design your goals uh, and your, your goal is your theory of change. We'll go into that in just a moment. You're gonna design your objectives, what actions you're going to take, and then what type of data you're going to collect and how you're gonna collect that. It's really important as you go through these PDSA cycles that you start with that plan, you're fully uh, designed and um, fleshed out uh, what you're going to do before you start doing it. That way you know like, the end product, what happened, is because of what you planned. If you didn't plan it and you get an end product, you can't replicate that. And then the other part that I want to add today is that equity reflection. So within all of these phases of that four-part uh, cycle, it's really important, again, to take an equity pause, to think about does this plan have the intended impact to all stakeholders of your of your community that you're working with? Uh, is it inclusive? Is it um, is it equitably driven? And again, the model of continuous improvement uh, through PDSA cycles. This is a visualization of that. Again, uh, one plan is not going to cure everything. It's not going to make you reach your final goal. It's the the concept of rapidly doing these PDSA cycles that's going to get you to your goal. So once you create one PDSA, or once you complete one PDSA cycle, now you've got a new standard. That's that triangle or that wedge. So now that you've got your new standard, then you build upon that, you do it again, you build upon that, you build upon that. Um, one, of the, one of my favorite quotes from uh, President Obama, I will always uh, tell my staff, better is good. I'll take better every time because better is hard. And that's the concept of continuous improvement. Uh, it's about building a sustainable improvement model because you're not, let's say, for instance, you're trying to improve uh, reading scores in third graders. You're not going to go from 50% to 75% in one PSA cycle. And it's okay uh, to understand that. And you have to kind of accept that, allow yourself to incrementally get there. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to be frustrated and not want to actually continue the important work that's happening here. One more slide and then I'll pass it off to Aria. Um, and let me check the time. Yeah, we're good on time here. Um, 
So the first step in this uh, PSA cycle, again, planning, uh, your plan has to start with your theory of change. You have to understand what you want to change, and then you have to have a theory behind that of how you're going to do it. Uh, that theory at its core is a cause and effect hypothesis. So when we talk about change, it really is just a hypothesis of what you think is going to happen and how it's going to happen. Uh, it's a basic formula as well. So if we do X, then we're going to get Y. Again, back to the idea of a workout goal. If we work out three times a week for 60 minutes each time, then we're going to get 1% less body fat, 2% more uh, muscle mass something like that. So it's very formulaic. So the, the X in this formula, those are your actions or a action. And then that Y is your goal or your desired future state. Very straightforward. So this is the theory of change. This is what the PDSA is built on. Uh, and we're gonna go further with this in just a moment. So I will pass it off to Aria to continue from here. Thank you, Adam. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a school-based uh, theory of change model that we're gonna be working with. Um, because what's really important about the theory of change and how the Inno app is constructed, it's to start with your major annual goal visions, but make sure you get all the way down to those very specific steps you're going to take in each cycle. So how do we get there? We start with our theory of change statement. If we do X, we will get Y as measured by Z. Now this last part, I know all you data folks are like, why are we not measuring? This is the part that you can really help concretely bring into your spaces of your charter schools. So, so the first one, if we do X, yes, if we, if we ensure that students are receiving high quality education, then by the end of the school year, 55% of our students will grow at least one benchmark rating from their benchmark score for the periodic assessment for reading. Now it's very wordy and very general, but I'll get back to that as measured by the growth of period reading scores. So what this is showing you is that you can take an annual goal such as improve student reading scores and really whittle it down, right? Really whittle it down to the by when, by how much, how are we measuring it? And are we using the unified score? Are we using the percentile score? Are we using the growth percentile? What are we using? We're gonna use the benchmark scores. We're gonna use those benchmark categories because every single periodic assessment, depending, it doesn't matter which, if you're using NWEA map, if you're using iReady, if you're using uh, the state uh, third and eighth grade assessments, if you're using the regents exams, whatever, well, I would say the regents exams are not periodic, but that's a whole other story, but, um, what I would say is you actually get the ability to communicate a similar strong goal across multiple different charter schools, multiple different levels. Everybody and their brother is talking about reading and math levels right now. So this is a great example of how you can use the Innovare model for theory of change for an annual goal. And the next step, we're going to talk about how that looks in Inno. So we talked, I just mentioned in Inno, it's, it's, and Adam did a great job setting this up. It is, Inno is meant to be a continuous improvement suite. It's as I, as I like to tell people, it's not just another data dashboard. It's not just another data readout. It's actually meant to take that data and then transition it into planning. So on the goals tab of the Inno app, you have these uh, actual goals that you can create. And Adam did a great job. You can even write your theory of change right in there. And then we'll get, we'll, he'll, maybe we'll get a chance to do it, but you'll see there are things where you can even get into the cycles, right? The details, all of those different things where you can actually plan by cycle. So for example, if we're doing periodic reading, cycle one is going to be your BOI. Cycle two uh, or three, depending on the timing, is going to be your MOI. And then cycle four will be your EOI. And so it gives you chunks of actionable data, chunks of actionable reflection. And your actions would be, what are you doing in between those cycles in the classroom, in, in the, the reading curricular shifts? that are leading to the improvement in reading. So this is what we talk about. You start with this big goal and then you bring it down to cycles and you bring it down to actions within those cycles. So you can do that rapid observation and intervention. And you're not just waiting until the end of the year to go like, did it work? I don't know. So, all right, uh, enough of me talking. We're going back to the Jamboard now. So the Jamboard that you opened before that you put your goal in, we're gonna revisit our goals. As Adam mentioned, we're both teachers. We really love to revisit that do now, right? Let's let's reflect that do now. Um, so yes, thank you so much. So you're gonna take a look 
at your goal. And you're going to turn your goal into a theory of change goal. Thank you. One quick note real quick. So just like I showed you there uh, on the on your Jamboard, <clears throat> you notice I grade, uh, put a gray box over that second activity. All you have to do is click on that gray box and delete it. If you happen to delete too many, uh, just do an undo, uh, Command Z or Control Z. Uh, but Aria, go ahead and take it out. Over. Thank you. So we'll give you three minutes to go in and take your goal from activity one and put your uh, theory of change statement. If we do blank, then we'll see blank as measured by blank. Okay. So three minutes on the clock. Uh, we'll come back at 1030. And just a reminder, so that goal that you started with, that is your, um, that is going to be then we will see section. So that's really your goal statement in, in this section. But we want to go further with that. So if we do, those are your actions that you're going to put towards that goal. So if we do X, then we're going to see Y, which is your goal. And then we want to be able to measure it. Because if you want to replicate it, if you want to manage that goal, you have to be able to measure it. So as measured by it. And Ari and I will just be jumping back and forth between uh, different goals, uh, advising along the way. Mm. Nice. And I know this is kind of a high pressure situation, usually we like to take a little bit more time in goal setting uh, so you can really flesh out your, your theories and your hypothesis. Uh, but since we have a, a short 45 minutes, we are gonna push things along. So, so take maybe another 60 seconds or so to finalize that uh, theory of change. If you don't finish it, uh, that's quite all right. Uh, this Jamboard will be open and you can, uh, you'll have that link. Uh, and I will be able to share this full deck with you with those links. All right, let's just take about 30 more seconds and we'll move forward, as Adam said. Uh, apologies for the rushed perspective on this. We all know that goals take much longer than this, but uh, we wanna make sure we get to the actual uh, tools and tricks of the trade that we wanna share with you to, to be able to do this kind of work um, down to granular planning with your teams to get that rapid uh, cycle going. So we're gonna move forward. All right. So now we're going to go over one more framework uh, for goal setting. This is going to get even more of a, like I already mentioned, a broader scale, uh, more systemic uh, tool that you can use for big, big opportunities, big changes, big improvement ideas. So Arya, take it away. Oh, let me. Uh, she's You're good. Her All coffee right. Here. Sorry. Just a, just a chug of coffee there. All right. So uh, a driver diagram. You may have heard of this before. And if you have ride with me because I really appreciate your patience. But those of you who haven't, simply a driver diagram is a visual, uh, I like to call it a flow chart. And it's a visual display of a theory of what is driving or contributes to the achievement of your aim. So that aim for reading is what we're gonna focus on. It's a map essentially. And what's nice about maps is that you could put them up and they can be visual aids for your teams. You could do it virtually. I actually am a really big fan of doing it in person someday when we actually can be in person again. Um, but uh, doing things together in, in, in a way that allows us to all co-plan in a systemic way. And that's that's what a driver di diagram is meant to do. And it, it, the change ideas, which we'll get to, they, they are those small shifts 
as the Obama quote that I love says is better. We got to get better. A lot of times when we approach challenges in, of problems of practice in education, we actually think too big. We want to get 100% kids to, to reading. Level. Yeah, of course we want 100% of our kids, but what are we going to measure in a month? How are we going to measure in a month? What are we going to measure in a month that shows us we're on the right path? And the last thing, goal structure provides clear communication and distributive leadership. That's really the biggest part of the driver diagram that I think is incredibly helpful for school leaders because it shows very visibly what is going to be do, done. And then in Inno, you can actually assign these change, ide these change ideas, which we call actions. We can assign them to people. You can actually have a one-stop shop where a school leader or even someone like you who's running a particular data uh, project can actually designate responsible parties and put due dates and things like that. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So this is the typical uh, driver diagram layout. This is not exclusive to Innovare. I will tell you that this is a, a universal thing, but we just like uh, to provide our teams with resources. So feel free in the slides to uh, steal these things and help them and use them. But this is what a layout of a driver diagram looks like. And you're gonna notice that on the left, you start with your goal, then you go into the primary, secondary, and then your change ideas. So this is what each of those are, your aim statement. That theory of change we talked about, that's our aim statement, all right? Um, and then, uh, so you set out what you want to achieve in your aim, and aim is clearly articulated in the goal or objective of the work. And that's your goal in Inno, the, the screen that Adam showed a couple of, of seconds, seconds ago where you had the goal written across the top, that's your aim statement. Then you move on to your primary drivers. These are the big bucket, big topic, big important areas that need to be addressed. Things like, as we gave in the example, high quality instruction. That would be a primary driver that would lead to meeting your aim. A secondary driver is sort of the next level down, a list of activities that can positively influence primary drivers. So in the world of high quality instruction, how do you get high quality instruction? What, what activity would you plan? For example, curricular development professional de curricular professional development. Sorry about that redundancy there. But you're putting in professional development planning for your instructor for your instructors in equity-based education or in um, inquiry-based education. That's what your secondary driver is. We're going to do PDs. And then your change idea is the really granular specific things that should have an effect on at least one of the secondary drivers. So you'll notice that you start with your aim and you plan backwards, but you actually are leading in this direction towards your aim. So Adam put this really amazing slide together of our, our aim broken down into already preset change ideas, secondary drivers and primary drivers. So going back to the high quality instruction. So two things that are secondary drivers of high quality instruction are um, fidelity implementation and progress monitoring. Progress monitoring. This is re these two things will drive the high quality instruction, which will then lead to an increase, according to your theory of change, in the reading scores for students on the periodic assessments. And the last thing I wanna point out are these change ideas. And this is where a lot of folks I think get hung up is we talk about progress monitoring, we talk about fidelity of implementation, implementation, but then we get stuck as to, okay, so what are you actually going to do? So we're in the, the change ideas, ensure that scope and sequence is embedded in the teacher walkthrough tool, right? So your leadership should be monitoring the implementation of the high quality instruction as a part of their walkthrough. So this is, seems kind of obvious, but actually it's not. It's something that as a school, you've decided this is our goal, this is our focus, and that vision should go all the way down through to the rubric that a instructor and a leader is using as they walk through a classroom. So this really helps align everything in a really concrete way that allows you to monitor what's happening on the ground in live time. Real quick, I'll, I'll add to this just briefly. Uh, so we've talked about several different frameworks. We've talked about the driver diagram, we've talked about smarty goals, we talked about theory of change, we talked about PDSA cycle. <clears throat> PDSA cycle actually lives within this. Your, your planning is that theory of change, but that rapid learning cycle, that's your, those are your green boxes. So if you're mm -hmm. 
uh, your aim could be a year long aim. Uh, it could be a, a full school year aim, but you can build multiple PDSA cycles within that. So maybe your theory of change is, let's focus on that bottom one, ensure that a scope and a sequence is embedded in the teacher walkthrough tool. So maybe you have a theory behind that that's gonna drive into your aim. So in your first PDSA cycle, try that out. If it works, replicate it, and then move on to the next one, move on to the next PDSA. If it doesn't work, move on and eliminate that from your list of options. Like you've proven that this change idea doesn't impact the end goal. So get rid of it. Secondly, progress monitoring for of tiered support in your second PDSA cycle, maybe that's your focus. Or maybe within one of your teams, you focus on that and another team focuses on uh, creating SEL and TSS structures. So this is how you build, you use multiple frameworks to drive improvement incrementally. Uh, so just wanted to add to that to give you a bigger context of like, why we're going through all of these various frameworks here. Uh, thank you, Adam. I, I think it's really important that you brought up too, like we have to be willing to admit that something's not working. It's okay. And the thing is, is if we do these sort of rapid cycles, if we if we decide, okay, that's not working, let's try something else or let's let's move a different direction. You can do that in, a, in November as opposed to May. And so that's really a key factor here is that, this is this is a cycle of learning, not a, yes, you're doing things, but this is about the learning experience that's going to get us to the goal we wanna to get to. It's not about picking one thing to do for the year and then just doing it. This is about keeping our options open, but doing it in a way that's structured and systemic. All right. Great, we're gonna- one drag, more time. Uh, Yep, back in the Jamboard. So we're gonna take what we just learned about that driver diagram. There's, it's a very extensive uh, framework that takes time. You wanna really be diligent about how you design these, but we just wanna practice this with you all. Uh, so we're gonna jump back into Jamboard. And in, um, so the third box down there, so just remove that one. And that's your activity three. So what we're gonna do here is create two primary drivers that you believe will help you reach that aim. And again, that aim is your, your goal that you put here in the middle of activity um, two or your primary goal that you put at the top. So again, what are those two big bucket ideas uh, that will drive change in your, uh, in your um, goal overall? So we'll take a few minutes uh, and Aria will be running back and forth across those jam boards to, to give some insight and to give some feedback along the way. And if you have questions about anything that we just talked about, if you want us to go deeper into some of that, by all means, come off mute and- Adam, do hear. you mind putting up slide 24 again so we can look at primary drivers and what they are? Sure. Thanks. So yeah, just two primary drivers, everybody. We don't need to do the whole thing because as Adam said, it should take you a while. We're focusing on the big bucket items that will really push towards your goal. We're doing pretty well on time here, so we'll we'll take a little bit um, to to give you some creative design time. So remember, we've got that. Big goal at the top, that's your aim statement. Now we want a couple of primary drivers. So those big topics that will drive improvement within that goal. Let's take maybe 60 more seconds.
We've got just a couple of slides after this to go through, uh, but I do uh, do welcome when we come back from this activity. Um, um, any volunteers that would like to to reflect on this process uh, and what your um, what your feedback is. All right, let us, I'm gonna stop sharing real quick. So I would love to, or I'll share again in just a moment. I'd love to have a couple of volunteers if you're willing and no pressure if, if no one's uh, willing to share, but I'd love some feedback on uh, how, you, how you viewed your first goal when we first started out 40 minutes or so ago from uh, taking those frameworks and now what you have in your, your primary drivers and your uh, theory of change. So anyone who wants to come off mute and give some feedback on the process would love that. And if no feedback, then Ari and I are more than happy to keep talking. I'm fully caffeinated at this point now, we're good. <laughs> All right, no worries. Uh, we do welcome some feedback in the, the chat as well. Uh, and you will, I believe, uh, Michael, at the end, we'll talk about a uh, quarterly survey. So you can provide some feedback in that. And we'd love to, to get some, um, some either affirmation or disaffirmation of the, the content that we've shared here today. So last thing to, to really to talk about, and let's um, just leave that there. So, the way we want to think about now or what we want to think about now is how we bring these goals to life. <clears throat> so often, especially in, in, in the past, in the 20th century, we schools would create strategic goals, these big grand visions. They'd invest lots of money, bring in consultants to design these strategic goals, but then they would just sit in PDFs. And who knows how, how they were being tracked? Who knows how they were actually being implemented? Uh, so when you're working through this, you're obviously putting your, your blood, sweat, and tears into creating these uh, these goals of how you think you're going to improve, how you think you're going to impact your students' lives. And it's really important work, but is it important enough just to leave it on a piece of paper? So how do you manage that? Uh, and that's one of the things that I want to briefly just walk you through a couple of things that Aria mentioned. Uh, we <clears throat> we believe at Innovare that we have a, a platform that brings this to life. So we want you to be able to, to um, build distributive leadership in those goals. We want you to be able to, to track the effectiveness and the efficiency within a goal, uh, whether it worked, whether it didn't. Uh, so within Anno itself, I'm just gonna briefly go over this is the actual application that we have. Uh, so as Arya mentioned down here, I'm sorry, it's way down at the bottom. Um, this is the actual goal we've talked about in this, uh, in this webinar. So growth and reading. Uh, and then this is your, your theory of change that we talked about. This is the exact theory of change. So when you have, when you have a tool, whether it's this or whether it's another platform, uh, when you have a tool that enables you to build transparency across teams, that means you don't have to, your principal doesn't have to, your uh, executive director doesn't have to continually just email or call and say, well, remember this is our theory of change uh, and this is what I want you to do. If you have a centralized location for all this action, for all this reporting and for all this tracking, then it enables you to build more efficiency, allows you to do more uh, in your schools. And it also takes some uh, work off of you all as well, because we're, we know um, every uh, person in a school is overworked. Uh, so within this, again, you're building those rapid learning cycles. So you can put in your actions, you can put in your metric goals, because remember, it has to be metrically driven if you want to manage it and scale it. So we, we emphasize the metric aspect of it. Uh, so here, again, you can assign uh, team members, you can assign uh, collaborative partners in that. You can also create status updates, uh, task updates, and such. So I go into this just briefly to say that to bring these to life, you need the tools that enable you to actually um, implement them, to track them, and to distributively manage them. So, if if that's something that your uh, your team needs, by all means, uh, I'll leave my email at the end here. Uh, I do want to also offer um, that I will will share this deck with you afterwards, so you can have all this content. 
there are links in there to the resources in the articles that we're using because we want all of our information, all of our uh, uh, webinars to be research backed and research based, uh, which we are a, a very research based company. So um, we'll leave, I, we did actually finish pretty well on time. Um, so kudos to us, Arya. Um, so any questions, uh, any feedback before we, we pass it back to, to Michael to close out, close out today? Well, I'd just like to take this opportunity to uh, thank Adam, thank you, Aria, for walking us through this sort of framework for understanding a continuous improvement cycle. I think it's always nice to be able to sort of step back and see the forest from the trees when it, when it comes to these processes. And I have a framework for this. And, and I think this is a starting point, the fact that um, we have this resource that we can share this out broadly with our community, I think is going to be a huge benefit. So thank you, as always, for the preparation and the research and all the work that goes into these these forums, so thank you for, for being available. Um, with that, I also just wanna to turn to our audience and our attendees a little bit. Uh, as you know, the Data Working Group wants to provide this sort of balance of sort of deeper dive uh, webinar content-based with tutorial and update instruction. And for that reason, we have a few announcements, a few PSAs, if you will, to share with the data management community. So I'm gonna turn it over to Tracy Davey from Eastern Suffolk BOCES, uh, if you're ready, Tracy, uh, to share a little bit about a few announcements regarding data reporting which I know is always top of mind for this group. So I'll turn it over to Tracy to share those updates. Um, hi, at, um, I'm sorry, uh, Michael, thank you for that. Can I share my screen too? That's all set, right? Yes, you should be able to. If not, let me know and we'll get you that ability. Okay, yeah, okay, great. Working. All right, great. Hi, so uh, hello everyone. I, I did ask Michael if we could have a chance to kind of make sure that everyone was up to date, um, thinking you know each month about um, what's coming up regarding the state's um, deadlines and you know things that you might want to you know keep in your mind. Talk to your data person if you're not that person, or if you are the data person and aren't sure you want to talk to your leadership about it. You know we are a resource for you. Um, I'm actually I'm coming to you from Eastern Suffolk BOCES. And um, I specifically support uh, 271 schools, charter schools in New York City this year. I see that my colleague Lori Hazard is also online here. She works at the Monroe to Orleans um, BOCES, and that's right up there in the Rochester area. So um, these are documents that are very near and dear to Lori and I, whether we want them to be. Um, I hope, you know, I'm sure that from your Rick, whether you're in the Albany area, Buffalo, or any other, you know, corner or part of New York State, um, that your RIC team, the Regional Information Center, is helping you to stay up to date on what's due and um, what you want to be working on next. I do want to point out a couple of quick things. This is the state memo. As you can see, it came out last August 10th. And there's a very important uh, statement here uh, regarding how the state uses the data. So in addition to due dates for data outlined in the SERS reporting timeline, and we'll look at that next, the department will extract and use data throughout the year as needed. So best practice, and they go on to that, is to make sure that you are reporting accurate data throughout the year. And um, we wanna help you with that. This here is a um, view of the uh, verification and certification deadlines for New York State in the SERS uh, Student Information Repository System, and that's the data warehouse. As you can see, all these dates here are how many times this has been updated. And as we scroll down a little bit, you'll see when something has been added, it might have a, uh, you know, a character here to tell you what the, um, when it was added. Okay, this goes through the whole year. I'm gonna flip forward to where we are in the calendar. Let's get into February, that one's passed. The next data deadline coming up, um, this was added on the fifth rendition of this particular document. Sometimes the state will have like due in March and then they'll add a date later. Um, anyway, they, um, and then they, you can, yeah, the uh, nicest slot, anyone who needs that, um, the state wants, needs the data um, next, oh, actually the end of this week regarding uh, pre-IDs. And it goes into details here. Um, the deadlines that you see here are usually Fridays when your data warehouse has to get the data to the state. And depending on where you are, you want to know when your RIC needs that data. I can tell you for Eastern Suffolk, Suffolk BOCES, we move attendance data on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. and we move the rest of the templates on a Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Um, Lori's deadline um, upstate could be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe Friday mornings. I don't know. Make sure you know what you need to do. 
Um, on March 11th, um, they're getting ready for the computer-based testing. They need pre-ID files. So you want to make sure that your data is accurate in the data warehouse, that you're, you know, you're, you're constantly updating your, this would be um, specific to your um, student um, demographic information, they need to know who the students are, and then your um, enrollment data, they need to know what grade levels they're in, and also you need to make sure that you have data reported in program facts. Um, nice slide is regarding um, L students, and um, you know you want to make sure that you have all those right things put in place. If a student is special education and is going to need supports for CBT again, those are in program facts. All that data needs to be updated. It should be updated weekly. In New York City, when you uh, input those pieces of data in the city systems, ATS and CSIS and whatnot, that data flows automatically. On um, March 18th, now this is something I definitely want to uh, point out specifically. Um, in this second column, you're going to see when a collection opens, when it closes, what a due date is, whether or not there's an extract, and then when there's a certification. So some of these things, you know, you, you may not have to do any extra work at all, right? If you're keeping your ATS up to date, there was nothing special you would have to do for that um, previous NISA slat or the um, CBT math um, deadlines. Um, for this BEDS day enrollment, they do this multiple times throughout the year. So again, you want to make sure that all the, the it's actually the same three templates. It's the um, demographics, student, the, or student light, the exit entry, and also your program facts. So this is a data extract. There's no um, particular extra work you need to do because th that data should all be updated regularly, but you need to be aware that the state is pulling that data. And they need to use it for research, for planning. For they, the first time they grab enrollment data um, was the first week of January so that they could start building their state budget for next year. So it's very important that these are accurate um, as we go along. Then, oh, Lori put in the, in the chat, I just noticed Thursdays is when you need that data in if you work with um, her Rick up in the Rochester area. Um, I do wanna point out FERPL for your charter school, the um, official reporting of free reduced price lunch students at your school is still the um, IMF form, the institutional master file that was completed or due back in November of 2021. If you need to make an update to that, I, um, is, I, I believe that you can uh, write to uh, data support and let them know if you realize that that's not accurate, maybe because you viewed it someplace else. Starting next year, FERPL will be part of the program facts and you'll wanna make sure that you're, you have the correct um, program fact for either free or reduced price lunch for each student. Um, then there's a UPK item. I know at least in New York City, that's nothing that we have to do. Um, so depending on what is going on upstate, make sure that you have that enrollment correct. March 25th, um, program services regarding uh, my brother's keeper. Um, none of the New York City schools have that particular grant, but if you do, make sure that you are aware that, you know, what you need done. And they're um, looking for service codes. These would be program fact records also. Then there's um, sometime in April, they haven't specified a date yet. They're going to pull L data again. Um, they do check it throughout the year. But I really, I know this is, looks like a far way off. I definitely wanna touch this April deadline. Um, your school needs to have multiple templates reported um, by the end of April to ensure that you meet the uh, state's requirement for how they will report out of certification matches to the US Department of Education. So to do this, there are multiple, um, like I said, multiple um, templates involved. Um, this data is reported publicly on the school report card. I'm just out of data, you know, pictures of um, data.nyse.gov. Um, in regards to teachers teaching outside of certification at charter schools, even though you have certification exemptions and it's enshrined in law that you can hire a certified teacher to teach in different areas. Every teacher who is teaching either without a certification or outside of their regular area will still appear in this section. I just wanna warn you of that because you may be thinking, wait, but I have these exemptions. It's just transparent reporting, okay? Then um, if your school fails to report data, this, um, will appear. I highlighted it in yellow. That, that's not what it was. Um, but I want you to know that 
the state will report, you know, clearly on the page, you know, complete data was not reported for your school in that particular year. Um, the templates, again, that you need to have reported for the um, out of certification match is staff snapshot. All the courses that are offered at your building, they need to know the location marking period, when can kids earn a final grade in a class, and course instructor assignment, which teachers are teaching how many sections of each class and which classes, and then student class entry exit. Um, we are recommending that your course instructor assignment be done April 1st, because as soon as you report that, you're going to be able to go into L2RPT and look for errors. Uh, frequent errors is taking, uh, taking, you know, you have a special education teacher and maybe um, high school algebra and in biology, social studies and whatnot, and you need to identify them as being um, the special education teacher in that room. If you just throw them in that classroom without identifying them as their specialty, they're going to come up as out of certified, out, right, out of certification. So if at April, early April, you're looking at that report now to RBT and you're like, but this teacher's certified, you, you have the time to fix it. I don't want you to wait till the last week because, so we're moving, um, student daily attendance data today. Um, we get it to New York City on a Wednesday. They prep the data. They shuffle all that in with the data that they have for their million students. They post it to state ed every Friday. And on the following Monday, L2RPT updates. So we, you need to make sure you report it early. So if you see a mistake, you have time to review that data later. I think that's about it. I actually, I'm gonna just take a quick jump to the website for um, Eastern Suffolk BOCES. I do have some links here. I'm going to send you in the chat to both the memo, the timeline, and then a video. Um, it's available here on our homepage, a YouTube recording all about the out of certification. I literally go through all of the, the SIRS 320, the 329, the 328, you know, how to look at those reports and how to determine if things are right and then where you have to go to correct them. Thank you, Michael. I did that. It was more than a New York minute, but I want, that was a lot of important stuff. Appreciate that. Thank you so much, Tracy, and thank you for linking those resources. Uh, we will also link um, these resources in our resource center. Um, I'll talk about how you can access that in just a moment. But you know, the purpose of, of, of all these uh, different meetings is to keep the data community up aware of these updates. And so, Tracy, thank you so much for being part of that. Additionally, as we come to the top of the hour, we ask that uh, you guys give us a little bit of feedback. Uh, Adam mentioned we take sort of a quarterly survey in these working groups, and we'd love to get your feedback. If you do not mind completing before you leave, it's about a two minute survey. So Kevin, if you don't mind just dropping the link to the data working group survey into the chat so that people can uh, completely uh, complete that real quickly and get us some feedback on this session as well as past sessions. We always take that feedback well. And also to hear a little bit about the topics that are most interest to you as we go into our last quarter of the year. As I mentioned, we will put all of these resources into the data working group resource center room. So we'll drop a link if you're not a member of the uh, resource center uh, room uh, in our resource center, please feel free to join via that link. And lastly, we look forward to seeing you at our future meetings. Our next working group meeting will be held on March 22nd, a month from now at 10 a.m. So we look forward to continuing our conversation on using data uh, and to drive improvement. As always, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to the association or to myself. I will throw my email into the chat so you can do that. Feel free to reach out to me with questions. But otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for having us.